So hi everybody, uh, my name is Jan Świeżowicz and I'm a uh, product manager for, uh, for uh, customer safety and security team uh, responsible for, for all X platforms uh, in, in Europe. Uh, by Europe, I mean the, the six, six countries that uh, currently OLX is running in, in Europe. Um, and I've been with OLX for six and a half years, working on different stuff, but if I were to say it's majority of, of the time I spent here, I spent uh, fighting, fighting fraudsters. So, um, going down the rabbit hole, so, uh, in the in the description of the presentation, I, I mentioned that what happens actually when when we start to interacting with uh, fraudster, how do they how do fraudsters operate, and uh, so, so you don't have to, uh, so, so I did it for you, so you don't have to do it on your own. But I highly encourage you. So there is a there is a wonder wonderful saying that eat your own dog food. So. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I think that it's, it's very true. So in order to to know the enemy, to get to know them, you need to just just uh, deep dive a, a little bit and, and understand how they operate. Okay. So um, uh, as far as uh, agenda goes, uh, firstly I will tell you in general what OLX is all about. So uh, the. I'll, I'll present a brief e-commerce breakdown. Then I will tell something about our fraudulent, uh, fraudulent patterns and I, I will go to real life examples. Afterwards, I will, uh, I will explain how, how to fight, uh, fight fraudsters, how do we do it at all legs, and also uh, well, what, what are the means that you can, you can take up and, and, and use in your own uh, organizations. And, uh, at the end, there, there will be time for your Q&A, but since we are also a, a, a very little group, feel free to interrupt me whenever, uh, whenever you feel that something needs more clarification. I also do understand that I've got the Polish accent and maybe sometimes I, I will speak too fast, so should I be, become really hard to understand, also just put a stop on me and, and I'll, I'll try to repeat really clearly. Okay, so let's go. Uh, E-commerce breakdowns. So that's uh, that's our first uh, first uh, point. Uh, so when you when you think about uh, how to do uh, online, uh, how how to buy things over the internet, uh, like in the whole e-commerce um, e-commerce system, you, you you will you will actually understand that there might be basically segmented into three. Uh, into three areas. So there's there's online shops. So putting it to real life, there are there are big supermarkets like Walmart, and the the um, um, online online examples of of uh, of such shops would be, for example, Amazon or Zalando. So it's a basically uh, highly controlled uh, environment. Where where uh, the owner like the Zalando, so you, you process the, so the payments are processed, the vendors so the, the vendors are are uh, selected, etc. etc. Um, the the other model is marketplace. So similarly to, to marketplace like you see here, so there there might be multiple people selling, and the barrier of entry. So to start selling is lower than in Zalando or in Amazon, because, uh, for example, you can you, you can go to do it, but somehow it is still controlled. And this these are examples, for example, how eBay operates, right? So there are there are online auctions, so you can start selling on eBay, but the payment is processed uh, pr processed by eBay or by, by uh, subjects uh, like responsible uh, or connected with eBay. And um, yeah, that's, that's, basically, that, that's basically that. And there, is a, and there is a third segment, which is classifieds. And classifieds can be compared to, to the last page of the newspaper. So it's a basically a, a place 
where people can advertise their the things that they are selling, but the owner of the newspaper has no no more power in the sense that they do not process the transaction. Okay, and this is putting it to the online world that that's how Craigslist, Gumtree, Olex, Marktplatz and as many, many other um, uh, or companies uh, are, are operating. So um, the barrier of entry for the seller right here is, is reasonably low because you have to just register, like usually quite easy and, and you can, excuse me, and you can start posting your ads. Or when you are a buyer, you just you just answer. But the the whole transaction, what happens afterwards, happens between between two people without without uh, an extra in intermediary. And I'm putting it to the to the fraudsters fraudsters world. So if I were the fraudster, uh, where do you do you think I would start? On classifieds, on on marketplace, or or try to try to scam uh, shops like Zalando or, or uh, Amazon. I'd love to scam Zalando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, Sorry, Zalando. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is that the, since the barrier of entry is reasonably low for, for classifieds, it's, it's, it's the easiest Easiest target per se. The gains probably are are also smaller, but but uh, anybody can start start doing that. And right now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some patterns. What what, what do we come across uh, with regards to with regards to fraudulent fraudulent activities on classified sites? Okay. So firstly, when we when we think of fraudsters. Um, there's there's always something for them. So so there, there there always there's always an explanation what they do, what they do, wh why they do what they do. So a they either want your money. B they either uh, they, or they want some sort of personal information from you, so they can, for example, um, take a loan in your name or uh, just play around with identity theft. Or free, they want some free stuff from you, so they want to rob you from your from your belongings. And in in general, in classified side, uh, we we can say that there are two two major segments of fraud. First is seller side fraud, and the and the second is buyer side fraud. So a few examples of of seller. Uh, Seller side fraud. Um, so I'm gonna just briefly explain a few of the frauds, and then we go to the to the uh, real life examples. So advanced payments, uh, one of the oldest tricks in the book for for fraudsters. So they usually post something uh, with a with a very very low price, like seventy percent of iPhone for 100, uh, 100 euros, etc., etc. In order to get the the volume of of possible buyers, and then they ask for prepayment. Somebody sends them, somebody not. But but whoever sends them the money, um, well, that they, they will never receive an item, right? Sometimes they ask only for prepayment just to make a shipment, and and that the same story goes. Okay, so so that's uh, that's one of the one of the. The, the oldest tricks in the books for, for them. The other is fake job ads. So, so you make a lucrative job job opportunity uh, to with reasonably low expectations from candidates. And um, while they apply, you collect their data. And then sometimes you the fraudsters go as far as asking for the, the picture of their IDs or or a wire transfer of a small amount of money just to prove that they are they are actually uh, these people, and and uh, you can either start a bank account in their name while they wire you money, or or when they send you a picture of their ID, 
etc. etc. It's all you need to have actually in Poland, for example, to take a small loan. Fake delivery. This, this one is a, is a, is a, a bit a bit sophisticated um, because usually people are more more and more educated right now. So whenever somebody asks, "Oh, I got an iPhone to sell for 100 euros," and obviously fraudster wants money in advance and never send the item, but people very often demand like delivery with cash cash on delivery. So I just pay cash whenever the, the package arrives. So the, the quite a recent, uh, quite a recent uh, scheme is that the people are, the, the, the fraudsters are impersonating a, a delivery, a delivery service. So I am both, as a fraudster, I am both selling an item and I'm also a, a delivery man. So I send them, I send them a text message. So for example, I'm selling an iPhone and Ola wants to buy an iPhone from me, kind of. Okay. And, the, and I say, okay, I will sell, I will sell you the, the, the iPhone for, for 100 uh, euros. And you ask, okay, so just send me the tracking number. And, and I say, okay, so the delivery man will, will text, uh, you'll, you'll receive a text from the delivery service and they will, they will come with the package and, and it's gonna be cash on delivery. And actually, a fraudster shows up at your doors, handing you a package full of nothing, bricks, whatever. And when, if you decide to open the package in front of the uh, the courier, I, I'm just a courier, so I, I have no idea. They are uh, so 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 the last story from Poland I heard is like they 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 got they got so so cheeky with with this trick. That they, they even say, let me go to my car and, and for the paperwork. And they never get back with, <laughs> with the money in their pocket. Or I need to keep the money, but here is the paperwork signed by me that the item was not there. But hey. So that's, uh, that's one, of the, uh, one, one of the more sophisticated tricks that unfortunately is still around. Uh, the last one I'm going to describe here is uh, the tri tri uh, triangulation fraud. I'm not sure how, how familiar you are with this one. Uh, triangulation it means that, that it needs three parties to, to do that. So there is a fake seller, uh, so, so there is a fraudster seller, there is a buyer, and also there is, a, uh, there is an innocent, innocent shop. So for example, uh, let's say David is a, is a shop owner. Ola once again wants to buy wants to buy an iPhone for me. So what I do first, uh, David sells sells TV sets, whatever. Yeah. So first, as a fraudster, I I make an order for a TV set. Then, with the same price, I put an ad online, and I tell Ola to wire the money to on on uh, on David's account. But, but the, the shipment address is mine, okay? So, so Ola, if she's su suspicious, she checks my bank account and she says, okay, he, he really does sell TV sets, he's got good opinions, so, so that's, that's all fine. But actually, but actually I get the, me as a fraudster, I get the TV sets. So this uh, triangulation fraud uh, means that there are three parties involved, but only there is a one winner. I mean, now it is okay because he sold it, we said he got money, so he's not cheated, but Ola, Ola unfortunately is. So these were examples of, of seller side fraud that can, uh, can occur on, on classified side. Buyer side fraud, uh, it's not this sophisticated, but uh, it's also very prevalent. It's, it's the fake payment confirmation. So I, I am buying an item from you, and, in, uh, and I ask you to sh send it to me, and as a proof, I send uh, I send a confirmation from the bank, which which I which I just prepared. Okay, so it's just a matter of the vol like a volume game. So uh, you hit as many as many targets as you as you uh, as you can, and somebody will will go for. 
So um, this is this is my real life example right now. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna show to you. So in order to prepare this presentation, I listed uh, a MacBook MacBook Pro with a reasonable price, not too high, not too low. It's pretty thousand seven hundred zlotys, so it's it's around nine nine hundred euros or so. And immediately I got a message which basically said uh, it's it's Polish but it's broken Polish. So you can already you can already tell that somebody's using Google Translate. However, the, the, the research does show that the like the Nigerian scam emails or the four, 419 uh, fraud scams are written uh, deliberately in this way, in this broken language. Um, because uh, it it helps them to select people susceptible for to, to getting frauded. So if they if they wrote, if they have written perfect English and they send it to one hundred people, uh, probably ninety nine would maybe respond to that. If they write it in, in broken English, only like a lot of people already recognizes this is a fraud, but. Those of they, uh, those of people who do, who do not, will probably actually end up being fraud. So it's a it's a numbers game, as I said, and this is how how they increase their uh, their probability of of actually defrauding people. So uh, basically, what what is written here is that uh, I greet you. This is this is what it is. Like I greet you. Uh, give me lowest price and their their email address. So immediately they they try to uh, they try to uh, steer the communication out of out of all legs. So so uh, they they know that we as a all legs we will not see what hap what's happening afterwards. So I, I actually I did so. So we started to exchange emails, and and uh, until this scam, the, the full scam was completed, we exchanged it around twenty two emails together. So so I uh, <laughs> he was busy doing doing something else, not scamming other people. So I, I'm happy about it. But I created like a Troy account. I invented a persona, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that I wanna I wanna. <laughs> Yeah. I and uh, like the, the things that I that, that I saw um, so immediately is that that they're they're mixing Polish and English, so they're ri writing some Pol some words in Polish, some words in English. Uh, their, their pronunciation is is bad. The immediately the guys offered to pay more, so the listing price was, was three thousand seven hundred. The guy says I paid three thousand nine hundred. Right away. But send it to me outside Poland. Send it to me to this guy wanted to send it to uh, for me to send it to Belgium. And right away he asks for the the bank account details. So I prepared the bank account details, and like, uh, I don't know, a few hours went by, and I received an email from Bank of Montreal. Uh, so, so it says, like, hey. Uh, the, it's an escrow type of thing, so the money is there. Bank of Montreal writes to me, the money is there, and the money will be released when I present the, the shipment document. Okay, so I need to I need to put the shipment document uh, to for them, uh, and then I will receive uh, money on my bank account. By the way, my bank account was two digits short, so so it wouldn't go through. <laughs> Okay, but still they didn't care. And then I get the, the email again from, uh, it, I don't know, maybe 12 hours went by. And I, I got the email from them again. And the, what's, so, so this is the email from, uh, from the seller, uh, from, the, from the buyer. Uh, also also uh, with the attachment of the confirmation from the bank. Uh, and there are, there are three things I listed in this, this email that, that are quite funny and also shows how they operate. So, 
first, there is a, this information that that no worries, your money your money is safe, and this buyer cannot cannot cancel cancel this payment that they made. Also, uh, I laughed at this one. So as a security measure, the, the money is blocked because there, there are ongoing frauds. That's why they, they are blocking money because there are a lot of fraud producers uh, on the internet. That's why, that's why they are not releasing money until, until the item is received. And the third one is that the FBI is aware of the situation. And if I do not send the, the, uh, the shipment confirmation in 48 hours, I will be I will be uh, chased by FBI for for fraudulent activity. It's all in one email. So, firstly, uh, first uh, the uh, let's say uh, they want to provide some comfort that hey your money your money is there it's safe. Second, they they explain why they do that. But the third is that they they all they, they end up with good old threat like hey just do that because otherwise they have guys on. So what I and there, there is this there is this Bank of Montreal uh, confirmation. So it's all fake fake data that I that I put. So it's all it's all there. So what I did is is I created a shipment document for them and I I, sc I scanned them and then sent it to them. And it was all fake, but I, I put the address that the, the guys asked me. And the Bank of Montreal responded to me and said, thank you, your money will be processed now. But it's just, it, it will take over the 72 hours. So it's usually it's the time that the package would, would have arrived to the, to, the, to the guy if I sent it. So in 72 hours, I would not be able to, to stop it. And the, the money was there. Okay, when I waited 72 hours and asked where is my money, there was no response. So, so this is, Basically, if I had sent the item, obviously, obviously, I would have been, uh, I would have been scammed. Uh, a few other things I want to show. So, so there, are, so, so this was like the whole elaborate scam. Um, the other, the other way that, that people are approaching is is uh, via WhatsApp. So, I, if I leave my phone number, so they they go directly because they know that Olex doesn't monitor these messages. Uh, what, what's funny about this one is is that the this uh, this buyer claims that they are in London. However, uh, the time zone of the screenshot that they that they sent to me shows that they they are either using some sort of simulator or they are somewhere on the east coast east coast of of of, you know, of America uh, because because the these times are. Much different, right? So, so uh, immediately you can you can you can spot that if you know where to look at, where where to look for. And this is I know I know that you don't speak Polish, but I uh, I want to share share that with you. And the English translation is coming up. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure how familiar you are with Thor. Thor is sort of like in a in a nutshell, it's a dark side of the of the internet where the Anonymity is uh, is bigger, is higher, so it's uh, very often used by some fraud fraud people to communicate with one another. And there is a there is a it's it's an expert expert of the of the fraudsters forum, where they where they advise one another what to do if a user if the, if uh, if a, a buyer uh, wants to. Or wants to uh, cash on delivery, so wants to wants to send items on cash on delivery. So they they, they make advices how to do it uh, for for a buyer to resign from cash on delivery and just just send out uh, money in advance for a, for a payment. Just uh, there are, there are some few advices you can you can read through later on. Okay, so. Now we know how they operate, so what can we do to fight it? And firstly, um, we need to rely highly also on, uh, on our community. So we need to give 
users a chance to to flag bad, bad users in any possible way. So if we if we suspect because we have we can have the best systems in the world, but but fraudsters are are gaining up and, and they're they're uh, advancing uh, in the out. So we, the users are our our community moderators are. Are, are one of the, our biggest weapons, and we cannot we cannot forget that. So we need to give them opportunity or possibility to to flag bad users and and make use of this information. Also, what we have noticed, and I haven't gone through uh, gone through that uh, uh, before, but a lot of a lot of fraudulent people uh, when they when they uh, start. Uh, scamming others, they very often use accounts that have been taken over. So they are taking over a good account with a good history. So so uh, the users uh, user suspicion is, is lower for for a given user. So so there are there are some trust indicators that the, this user is a good user because he's been long with our platform. Uh, he's made a lot of. He, he's got a lot of ads on, on his uh, so you can see that people are buying from them. Yeah? So there are people taking over such accounts and it's easier to scan. So what we need to do product-wise is to make sure that the accounts uh, are not being taken over. I don't know whether you know the page have I been found. So there are, there are services that, that shows whether, whether uh, email address, for example, that you are using uh, has been ever a subject of a, of a data leak in somewhere over the internet. Um, so, so we we introduce some of the, of course, the SMS verification, uh, the uh, the device fingerprinting. So we are informing users. For example, if you try to log in from the uh, from the machine that you've never logged in before, we uh, we have developed a, a system that checks whether you are logging in with a password that is considered as a easily crackable and. And we suggest you to, to change the password, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we try to do our best also to, to prevent uh, account takeovers. But these are one things. But the the, the 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 most valuable and most important is to educate users. So uh, the product needs to team up with with business, with marketing, and and uh, invest in. In fraud, pre uh, fraud prevention through uh, fraud prevention through education, because if users know what the schemes are, if they really know what to take a look out on, uh, the 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 fraudsters will be less and less successful. So this is this is one of the examples. What what can we do? So we can we can introduce safety tips whether on the on the uh, on the action points when you you want to contact the user. Uh, so you can use some some landing pages of uh, what to do, how to how to do it safely. So teaming up with with some with some marketing people and uh, making it sound like that people are not scared of your platform, but they are just just more more aware of what can be what can be happening. Um, so th th these are these are examples of of. Of safety tips that that we are using. So whenever you try to uh, try to in induce in a chat message, you can you can see you can see those in uh, uh, on Alex. Also, we have invested in uh, so some of the countries have invested into some some uh, video campaigns of showing the the movies in some sort of, of humorous manner of what can happen when when you are. When you are uh, defrauded, and there are there are a bunch of safety tips there. And in Poland, for example, it went viral. I, I will share a link afterwards, but I don't believe that we've got a, we've got the time to, to show any of those of those of those videos. But in a humorous way, they show how how fraudsters operate. That they're sending bricks, not telephones. They're, 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 if you pay in advance, that you might never receive an item, etc., etc., etc. So that's why that's why uh, all legs. Uh, Always uh, puts a face-to-face -face meeting as a as a recommended way of doing transaction. What we can do, we can educate from the little ones, like here. So, so there there are some sort of academies that the the, 
the, we, we try to spread knowledge. So uh, just to how to stay safe for the internet. So we, we educate little ones, the bigger ones too. So we uh, cooperate with law enforcement. We, we share what we know of how the fraudsters operate. Uh, with with uh, with law with law enforcement and and uh, and and uh, make it make it more clear of what the scams are. Also, as you say, we foster safe transactions. So Alex has also invested in some places in the world for uh, the safety meetup points where where uh, people can. Can uh, safely meet in in a in a shopping mall, and they know that uh, that uh, uh, the transaction can can uh, undergo with no with no big threat. So these are these are safety points. Q. And I believe this is this is it. This is me. And should you have any questions, we can we can go now or. Later on in the discussion, so come with me, please. Got any questions from your side on, talk, on about the talk on Myanmar topics? I have a question for the audience. Could you spot the type of MVP that Jan Landos was using uh, by uh, by working with the fraudsters? Very, it's a very um, Common used MVP type that Jan was using, because it, the basic idea is you use you use lean techniques not to discover customer jobs to be done, but to discover uh, discover what the fraudsters are doing. And he was building an MVP. Like what uh, what was the MVP technique? Not really. I'd say mock up. Yeah, well, mock-up, yeah, it's a type of mock-up. The Wizard of Oz, yeah, so he was kind of pretending to be, uh, to be a, a service that was not existing because he was not a user that could be frauded, is that right? Yeah, yeah no? I would say yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. It was just, just, it's just you, you pretend to be a service for someone who wants to, to wants to act fraudulent with your service, and by doing so, you find out what are their intentions, uh, the movements, actions, techniques, tactics. That yeah, was customer discovery on the on the on the on the dark side of your of your domain to be more active and, and be uh, and have chances to counteract before. Uh, you, you see things happening on your platform. Yeah. And this was the basic idea we found in the workshop, and I'm so super happy to see this in action. Yeah, and I was not. I think well, I, I thought it was a crazy idea. Yeah, really, actually, a stupid idea. But um, I mean, yeah. that seems to be working. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we we are privileged that that we can we can get defrauded and not lose actual actual money. Yes? Yeah, so I, I yeah. didn't lose anything. To, for example, be defrauded in Zalando means is probably it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be harder yeah. to do without being uh, like doing with it with damage control. Yeah. But actually, that became our standard now. So when we travel to other countries where we have uh, we don't have a lead singer in, in, in Germany, so that's one of the problems. Uh, so Jan is in Poland, so he's happy, so he can get defrauded easily there. But like when we travel to other countries where we have a platform, we actually try to get the product there. Mm -hmm. And so also local teams now have this, um, let's say like an action. So whoever gets successful in being the product and actually catch the fraudsters themselves, mm -hmm. they get a bonus or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very interesting concept mm -hmm. where you actually are part of the customer pool mm -hmm. experiencing all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's much easier than solving these problems if you know what really happens when, when they happen yeah, actually yeah. to the customer. Uh -huh. yeah, that's what I really find interesting that when we came to you one of the big issues was you don't know your customers well enough so it's very hard for you to track their problems and now that you prove kind of getting into the shoes of yeah. your customer yourself and became your customer 
and became a fraudster at the same time, I think that's a super solution for yeah. for the company. It's a big plus. Yeah, it's a, something that I didn't mention. It's our 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 uh, we call them CSI unit, so the the unit that, that catches the bad guys. So they also do a uh, do a, um, a frequent, let's say, they, they call it provocation. So they, they put out, so, so so they act like fraudsters. But instead of 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 defrauding people, they are they are sending like, hey, it's all legs, just just for so you know. If I were was a bad guy, you would you would have just lost money, or you would you would uh, lost your item, etc. etc. So, so uh, they're they're doing they're doing that. Yeah, but the sad part and funny part actually about that is that when they're sending, for example, those messages like, "Hey, this is all like security thief, this deal, and that blah blah," the people are answering back like, "Yeah, yeah, awesome, but I still don't know where to send the money." Yeah, <laughs> I mean we, you, you cannot you cannot win them all, of course. So some some people, so like we have we have users that 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 writes to us. It's the tenth time I'm being I'm being defrauded now. It's so, like okay, so just the light bulb light bulb should 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 like pop up in your head that maybe there's something that you are doing that you are susceptible to. Uh, to, to being defrauded and, and you're simply naive and and, and you, to the to the services like like classic mm -hmm. ones we, we have this because we were uh, the part of of uh, Allegro group uh, back in the days and very people people very often uh, are associated us with Allegro Allegro is a marketplace which has a controlled transaction which uh, in the end can can generate some refunds whenever the or, or stop the transactions whilst you wouldn't write to the newspaper owner that hey I just contacted somebody from your newspaper from the ad that I saw in your newspaper please give me back my money that because I sent it to them okay because there is this part that we we do not we do not really we are not fully in control of is the transaction so so we do not necessarily know. we we are doing right now our best to to, to also to work on this on, on this problem and we uh, I, I wouldn't go in, in right now to, to do a bigger discussion but but we are uh, we are let's say introducing uh, sort of uh, fostering transactions over the all legs with with, uh, with cash and delivery etc etc but still the general model is is that uh, that uh, the transaction is out of our control and is education still the only thing you can do against uh, fraud? Or Sorry? Is education still the only uh, solution you found against fraud? No, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, I believe that they, they also is gonna is gonna speak about more of like so we we are recognizing the the fraudulent patterns and, and we try to stop fraud before it happens. So we apply machine learning to, to, to understand more of the fraudulent behavior and, and try to try to catch catch the most of them before they actually do. But once the ad is posted and people so, so more people are aware of how how fraudulent uh, fraudulent uh, users operate, uh, the more will not be a subject of a, of a fraud. It doesn't work. The safety tips don't work if they're not being sent at the right time. Mm -hmm. So we are all so bombarded with different pop-ups, whatever, everything is like in our faces. And when you are a user like my mom, who's actually like maybe using classifieds, and then she gets a message, she can either get freaked out or just like, oh, I don't want this, I want to send a message. So if it's not really like you are actually preparing to send a transfer, and then you get like, whoa, should you do that? Really think about it. And then you have to do some action. You will not be triggered to think about what you're doing. So actually, I think social media and everything, like the noise environment, actually made it easier for right. fosters to operate mm -hmm. in, in online environments because people are so currently saturated with all the information that they're like, I'm doing my thing, just move, right? And so, yeah, yeah it's like it's a touch and go game. 
that's very true. Of course, so so we do implement. So I, I didn't I didn't share a proper thing, but for example, we, we do recognize I mean, bank account patterns, and we if we spot it in the in the message sent from one OLX user to the other OLX user, there, there's gonna be a warning popping up like that. Hey, we uh, we discourage uh, payment with advance, etc., etc. So people still do it anyway, but but. There are some contextual warnings that are that are popping up, <coughs> but as Verissa said, uh, we are we are really really overwhelmed with, with a lot of a lot of different type of noise uh, manners etc etc and, and sometimes it's hard to get the message across. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the interesting frauds that we saw in the last um, couple of, let's say months is actually phishing frauds where you have let's say like naked people on the ads. Right, and so naked people like what? So interesting about this. But a lot of people think they're they're interesting, so they click on it. And so you go to a site, and the site is also has potentially some naked people, and you're like putting inside your information, right? You're just like, wow, something cool will happen. I don't know what. And then you actually get fished. So yet all of your data is there, and you just wanted to have fun, right? Or whatever. But it's human nature. You cannot prevent these things. Of people's curiosity to go further to certain like aspects, but while they're on our side, we try to keep them safe. So yeah, I think the, the education part is about like in general the internet or the interwebs are weird. <laughs> not all people are people there, <laughs> mm -hmm. and not all people who are actually saying that they're the person like Jan are not the person that they're saying they are. And so this is something that people are not aware of today, even though we think they are. But what makes it interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I think then, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.